We begin tonight with where we are in the course of this pandemic and just how we got here. It's not going to be good. We're going in the wrong direction. If you look at the inflection of the curve of new cases, and as you said in the run into this interview, that it is among the unvaccinated. And since we have 50 percent of the country is not fully vaccinated, that's a problem particularly when you have a variant like Delta, which has this extraordinary characteristic of being able to spread very efficiently and very easily from person to person. So we're going in the wrong direction and the numbers back Dr. Fauci up. COVID infections are up 47% in just the past week and hospitalizations are up 32%. The biggest surge is in the state of Florida, which is still producing one in every five new COVID infections nationwide. In Orlando, the ICU at one large hospital is now completely full, and over 90% of the COVID patients in that hospital are not vaccinated. Nationwide, only 49% of Americans are fully vaccinated. Among people 12 and older who are eligible, just 57% are fully vaccinated. And according to a new poll, 81% of people who haven't gotten the vaccine say they probably or definitely won't get it. Even some people who have gotten sick with COVID say they won't get the shot. Like this man in Louisiana who was hospitalized with pneumonia and must be studied, must be studied. If you would have had a chance to get the vaccine and prevent this, would you have taken the vaccine? So you'd have gone through this? I'd have gone through this, yes, sir. Don't shove it down my throat. That's what's local, state, federal administration is trying to do, to shove it down your throat. What are they shoving, the science? No, they're shoving the fact that that's their agenda. The agenda is to get you vaccinated. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, he's right. There is a government agenda to get people vaccinated just like the government has had agendas to get people to wear seatbelts and to stop smoking. And now some government agencies are saying enough is enough on people refusing vaccines, and they're starting to mandate it. Just today, the mayor of New York City announced that all 340,000 city workers, from teachers to police, will have to either get vaccinated or get weekly testing. Also today, the governor of California announced that all 246,000 state workers there will have to be vaccinated or get tested regularly. And the VA announced that it will require that all of its healthcare workers get the vaccine, which makes it the first federal agency to institute a mandate. So this is what it's come to, America? My question tonight is, how the heck did we get to this point? Joining me now is Eddie Gloud. He's the chair of the Department of African American Studies at Princeton University and an NBC News contributor. His book, Begin Again, which I highly recommend, James Baldwin's America and its Urgent Lessons for Our Own, comes out in paperback tomorrow. So, Eddie, Professor Gloud, you tweeted today that America's, quote, basic commitment to a moral and social contract seems to have been tossed in the trash bin. Lay out for us what you mean in relation to COVID and the the refusal of basically a third of our population to get this vaccine. So COVID has revealed, thank you so much, Zerlinda. COVID has revealed so much about um, our society, right? The breakages, uh, the civic breakages. It's revealed uh, the trouble with our healthcare system. It has revealed the deep inequality Uh, that defines every aspect of our society, but it's also kind of demonstrated uh, the way in which our civic relationships to each other have kind of in some ways collapsed. And I think it has everything to do with this conception of liberty and freedom that has become in some ways, liberty and freedom have become synonyms for selfishness. The deep distrust of government that has been a part of a political ideology for the last 40 years has led folk to believe that there's no real robust conception of the public good that they ought to be invested in. So you have people in the shadow of 614,000 Americans dead, feeling no responsibility to those dead, feeling no responsibility to each other. 
And so, like the man in Louisiana, his whole idea is that government is trying to shove something down my throat, as opposed to thinking about his own responsibility to the community with which, within, with, within which he lives. And so part of what COVID has revealed is kind of a kind of canary in the mind, Zerlina, showing us that the problem with democracy, our democracy goes beyond just simply the ideology of Trumpism. It goes to the very way in which we think of our relationship to each other and our obligation to each other. So we're in deep trouble. We're in deep trouble. This makes me think back to the beginning of the pandemic. So in March and April of last year, when we were first getting hit really, really hard, certainly in New York and California, uh, we're getting hit especially hard. And I just remember everybody was like, oh, we have to lock down. We have to stay home. We we're going to take all the precautions. People were, were really scared because we didn't know what to expect. And then there were reports that there was a disproportionate impact on communities of color and that more people of color were passing away from COVID-19. And just like that, I remember Jared Kushner on TV saying, we're going to be rocking by July. Now, he was completely wrong because it's July 2021 and we're still not rocking. Um, but I, I can't help but wonder if the fact that it was being reported that COVID was a problem for black people and brown people and if you're relatively healthy, you'll be fine. And some people took the message that, oh, that's we, we need to get back to work. We need to get the economy open. It, it's not it's not my responsibility to protect those communities. Do you see that same thing when you think back to the beginning of the pandemic? Well, you know, I think there was a kind of moral callousness, uh, a sense that it's, this is not touching me, that death uh, loss and grief uh, is yours alone, that you should only, that you would have to deal with it in the privacy of your own home. There were no national rituals of grief, no real recognition of what the country was experiencing. You heard uh, the Lieutenant Governor of Texas, you remember talking about old elderly people, that they, that they were disposable. You heard in the public discourse, in some ways, Zerlina, this kind of rhetoric of that there's some people that, you know, we, we will lose. But because our values were tethered to the almighty dollar, there was this kind of rush to get back uh, to normal. And, you know, there's something there's there's a kind of historical precedent for this. Remember the roaring 20s. You know, when we see people doing the Charleston, mm -hmm. you see my old here's my my Charleston example. Right. When the Roaring Twenties is this example of Americans trying to rush past the carnage of World War I and the devastation of the influenza epidemic of 1919, right? And so part of what we're talking about here is this kind of tendency uh, in American life um, to reach for the kind of easy answer. Um, and in this instance, that easy, the easy answer is found in selfishness, it seems to me. I think that is a that's a hard thing to hear, but I think it, it's so, so on point. I remember back when the CDC was trying to figure out how to do the messaging around masks. And I was like, oh, the mask is really to protect the most vulnerable among us because it prevents the spread of the disease. And I was like, oh, that's not a message that's going to work here. We don't do the I do this slightly inconvenient thing to protect other people. You have to tell Americans that the mask is for you. Um, do you feel like there are any other current trends um, when we're talking about uh, the refusal to wear masks, the refusal to, to want to be uh, locked down to get this vaccine? Do you see a connection between that mindset and the mindset of folks that believe the big lie or the mindset of folks who are still following Donald Trump? Absolutely. We're experiencing, and I've said this before, we're experiencing rolling civic power outages, Zerlina, from January 6th to the attack on voting rights to, to the attack, you know, the violent attacks against Asian Americans to the debates around immigration, rolling civic power outages where the very kind of foundation, the kind of, shall we say, the, the grid that makes our democracy possible is short circuiting every other day, right? Yeah. It seems to me. Um, and so I think this is part of the part of the ongoing crisis we face. And it's not reducible to one particular figure. It has everything to do with a way of life that has defined the country for more than a century. Um, and we have to figure out a different way of living together if we're going to survive at all. So I don't wanna just 
talk about the problem. I want to try to figure out what possible solutions look like. So can America recommit to a social contract for the common good? I think so. You know, I think it has everything to do with what are our obligations to each other. We could say to each other, Zerlina, that if you get old, if you get sick, we got you. There's no reason for you to get, go broke because you're sick. So that obligation is evidenced in our health care policy. We're going to say to each other, if you work 40 hours a week, you should have a living wage. That's our obligation to each other. We're going to say to each other that if you, no matter the color of your skin, does your zip code, where you live, how... We're going to guarantee that every child in the United States gets not only gets a quality education, but gets the best education possible so they can not only dream dreams, but make their dreams a reality. We can begin to legislate our values by saying this is at the heart of who we are, not just simply this wild, wild west selfishness where we're kind of in this social Darwinist mode where people just do what the hell they want to do in light of their own ambitions and selfish desires. We can actually announce what we care about in the very ways in which we legislate.